All About Alfie by Shirley Hughes. Alfie's Big Adventure. Alfie and Mum and Flumbo were going on a big adventure. Alfie had packed his night things and his favourite book and his special blanket. They were going to drive into the country with Mum's friend Helen and stay for two whole nights in a little cottage. There would be no other houses, only trees and fields with cows and sheep in them. Dad and Annie Rose were staying behind. Helen was at work all day, so it was already bedtime and Alfie was in his pyjamas and dressing gown when she came to collect them. Dad and Annie Rose were on the doorstep to see them off. Alfie and Flumbo were tucked up in the back of the car and Mum and Helen were in the front. It was very exciting driving at night, with all the street lights on and the curtains drawn and people going to bed. Alfie did not want to sleep. He wanted to stay awake and see everything. Soon they were on the motorway, with big cars and trucks swooping past, and notices which Alfie could not read, and tall lampposts marching towards them one after another. After a very long time, they got onto a smaller road, and the houses got further and further apart, with fences and hedges and fields in between. Alfie was very nearly asleep when the car began to bump over a rough track and through a farmyard. Then, at last, they stopped. Well, here we are, said Helen. They got out of the car and stretched their stiff legs. It was absolutely, completely dark. Not like the night time at home, with lights everywhere, but quite black all around, and very, very quiet. Alfie held on to Flumbo very tightly, in case he was frightened. In front of them, was the dark shape of a little cottage, all by itself behind a wooden fence, like a house in a storybook. Helen found the key to the front door. Mum shone a big torch while Helen opened it. They all stepped inside. There was a fusty, wooden smell. Mum held the torch high. Shadows leapt against the wall. This is the living room, said Helen, and the kitchen is here. I'll just go in and turn the electricity on so we can have a hot drink before we unpack and make up the beds. She went over to the kitchen door. Just as she opened it, there was a noise from inside. It was a wild, fluttering, blundering noise. Then a piece of china fell on the floor and smashed. Something, or somebody, was inside the kitchen. Mum dropped the torch. Helen slammed the door shut very quickly. They all shot out of the cottage and stood in the garden, holding each other's hands very tightly. It's all right, said Helen in a brave voice. It doesn't sound like a person in there, and it's certainly not a ghost. I think some creature has got in by mistake and is just as frightened as we are. She led the way back into the cottage. Mum and Alfie followed. Mum picked up the torch. It was still working. Then Helen opened the kitchen door, just a crack this time, very gently. They all peered inside. There, perched on the back of a chair, they saw an owl. It turned its head around and stared at them with big, shining eyes. Its steady gaze made it look more like a person than a bird. Helen quietly closed the kitchen door and had a think. It must have come down the chimney, she said. We mustn't frighten it, but we've got to let it out somehow, and the kitchen window won't open wide enough. So Mum ran, ran to help her open the living room windows and the front door. Helen picked up a tablecloth. She opened the kitchen door again, and slowly, slowly, they began to edge inside. Helen crept forward. The owl shifted its feet uneasily. Just as she was getting near enough to catch it, it suddenly swooped across the room. It knocked a mug onto the floor and broke the saucer. It flew around wildly, beating its wings against the ceiling. Alfie clutched Flumbo very tightly and buried his face against Mum's legs. Then, quite swiftly, the owl landed on the draining board near the sink and sat there, 
settling its feathers. Slowly, slowly, Helen began to edge forward again. As quickly as she could, she threw the tablecloth over the owl and wrapped it around gently. Before it could flip about inside, she ran to the front door, stepped outside and let it loose. Alfie and Mum were close behind her. Together they watched the owl fly straight out over the fence in one big swoop and high into a tree. They saw its shape among the branches, outlined against the night sky. After a bit, they went back into the cottage and very soon the lights were on and they were sipping hot chocolate in front of the living room fire. What an adventure this has turned out to be, said Mum. We'll clear up in the we'll clear up tomorrow morning, said Helen. Alfie was too sleepy to say anything. At last, he and Mum and Flumbo were tucked up together in a big double bed. Just before Alfie went to sleep, he heard the owl calling from its branch under the stars. It was a lonely sound, but a nice one too. Next morning, they came down to find Helen cooking breakfast in a clean, tidy kitchen. Alfie ate his egg and bacon sitting on the doorstep in the sunshine. Some little birds came hopping around looking for crumbs. Will the owl be back again? Alfie asked. I don't expect so, said Mum. Owls usually sleep in the daytime and come out at night. We saw him up close, didn't we? said Alfie. We did, said Mum. And I don't know who was most frightened, him or us. Flumbo wasn't frightened, were you Flumbo? said Alfie. But Flumbo said nothing. We were very brave, weren't we, Mum? said Alfie. We certainly were, said Mum. What an adventure.